right, this is James with First Updates Now. I'm here at the Orlando Regional with 233, the paint team. We're going to go over this amazing machine and all of its functionalities today on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, so Gabby's going to start us off, and then she's going to bring it over to Sam, Nick, and Kai to go over all the different subsystems. Gabby, take it away. All right, so I'm going to start us off with, oh, the fabrication of the robot, since that was my main specialty. Probably some of my favorite features about our fabrication was the fact that with our arms this year, we actually used carbon fiber to reduce as much weight as we possibly could to add a little bit more weight into our collector and such. We have some really cool wheels and some HDPE cut out here with some more stain with some more metal. And then of course, with our turret, we have a stainless steel plate on the bottom here, which was all very fun to cut out. Everything is water jetted and then some of it's bent and then the rest of it was powder coated and it was a lot of fun to make this year, along with a bunch of wire. So we handed off to Sam then. So this year we just we, um, we went for using the limelight for our auto targeting system. So we have it mounted right here on this uh, nice beautiful mount. And it basically reads the speaker April tags to do auto targeting both with the turret and then the angle portion on the shooter. And this just allows the driver to just pick a spot on the field and just shoot. And it works most of the time. Um, we also use, I believe, can coders on about every single moving part, at least that we can, like the pivot on the shooter. And then we also use it on the collector shaft as well. This kind of just allows a robot to always know the position of these mechanisms just so we can kind of avoid human error during the reset process and it just makes system checks way simpler. Um, for an autonomous, we actually use the Corio pathing utility. It's really, really cool. Um, we tuned it just so we could get our steel auto set up. So we can actually shoot one note, go out to the midfield, steal three, and kind of give us that advantage when competing with higher level teams. Uh, I think I'm going to pass the rest off to Nick about the mechanical design of the robot. All right, so this year our drivers wanted to use an over-the-bumper intake. Uh, so I had some concerns about, um, you know, hitting into things with over-the-bumper. Uh, so to combat that, we have these half-inch HDPE plates with these quarter-inch um, aluminum all bundled together with this um, front plate. Uh, we have a pass-through like this because we wanted a turret. So um, the note gets in taken and we have a sensor right here to detect it. Uh, it'll stop there, lift up, and then do this. And we needed that for our turret because we couldn't get a turret that was big enough to actually go through the center with the notes. Uh, so we have that pass-through outside of it. Uh, we have a custom machined gear plate here for a really reliable uh, pivot on our shooter. Uh, we've had some success with that. We decided to go with uh, these really uh, fast one-to-one -one on a Falcon shooter wheels. We have this 550 to feed our shooter wheels and yeah, I'll pass it off to Kai to talk about some electrical. Uh, so for our electrical, we have a combination of a bunch of different motors. So uh, we have a Falcon 500s for our drive base. We have a bunch of Neos uh, for our shooter and intake and uh, Neo Vortex for our, well, also for our intake. Uh, the cool thing about this robot is that uh, since we couldn't get enough power wires on our turret, we uh, custom printed a 3D printed uh, what we call a wire sandwich where all the wires are fed through in a single point and uh, is given enough slack for our turret to rotate over 720 degrees um, without slip rings. Um, the other interesting thing is that our PDH is at the bottom of our robot, so we don't have to stick our hands into our turret to work on it. Um, as you can see here, all the power wires fed through different channels and then fed through the, through the bottom of the belly pan and into the top of the robot, and it actually allows for more protection against any, any kinds of impacts or 
uh, shredding. All right, all that's really cool. Let's power it up. Let's just see. Uh, let's just see everything in action. All that's really cool. I've been really impressed with all the improvements that you guys have made over the last couple years. Thank you so much for the interview, Gabby, Sam, Nick, and Kai. And I really hope to see more amazing machines out of 233 in the future. This is James signing off on Behind the Bumper. Support Funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.